Two 20-something friends living in Miami during the first Iraq war take advantage of a little-known government initiative that allows small businesses to bid on U.S. Army contracts. That's why today on The Summarizer, War Dogs. In 2008, some Albanians kidnapped David Pakus, who's an international arms dealer. They hit him and point a gun at him. In a voiceover, he starts telling us about the war business and how war is a whole economy. But he didn't know that yet. In 2005, David Pakus is a 22-year-old guy who works massaging rich dudes in Miami Beach for 75 bucks an hour. Sorry. It fell. But he had had enough of his work and invests all his money in a big idea. Selling guns to the US? No. That comes later. His plan was to sell quality bed sheets wholesale to all the retirement homes in South Florida. He bought 65 and as you must expect, sells none of them. Days later, David is at an old school friend's funeral, named Pete. There, he meets Ephraim Devroli, David's best friend growing up. They haven't seen each other since they were 10, so they go for a ride to talk. In the car, Ephraim tells him he was living at LA and selling guns on the internet with his uncle. But he came back to Miami to start his own shop, because his uncle had stolen some money. Meanwhile, they went to buy weed. A few men tell Ephraim they sell weed, he gives them $300 and they give him nothing. So, he takes a gun from his car and starts shooting to the sky. <laughs> Later, David comes back to his house and girlfriend, noticing they clearly got weed after the shots. On the next days, he keeps trying to sell the bedsheets, but he sells zero. After that, he goes to see his friend, who now sells guns to the US military, and in the last 8 weeks made $200,000. Apparently, the government had a public website containing every military contract currently up for bidding. So he just looks for the small contracts that the giant defense contractors ignore. As he says, he lives from the crumbs. The next day, Liz tells David she's pregnant. After telling this to his friend, Ephraim invites him to join the business, and he came back to work with him. So, David lies to his girlfriend, telling her that he will start selling bedsheets to the US Army. To start the company, they need money to buy guns, so here appears Ralph Slutsky a local businessman who owns dry cleaners in Miami. He puts the money to back the deals in exchange for a part of the company and became a silent partner. But they don't only sell guns, they also party and get beaten up by Dan Bilzerian. <laughs> After that, David receives a call from Captain Santos. We just got the Beretta deal. The Beretta deal was 10 times bigger than anything they had closed so far and they were going to make $600,000. <laughs> but there is one problem. Berettas are pistols made in Italy, and that country bans ships to Iran. So, they will send them from Italy to Jordan, and from there to Baghdad, Iraq. You may be asking, is, is that, that legal? legal? It's not illegal. In a dinner with some friends, they tell David that apparently Ephraim's uncle never stole money, but his friend was the one who had stolen money from his family. But we don't care about that, because at that moment, Ephraim appears and tells David that the Jordanian customs seized their Berettas. So now, they have to fly to Jordan. The permit to move the guns was expired, so they give some money to a man that will get a new permit to fly them to Iraq. Three days later, the man got them no permit, but had the guns in a truck and the best smuggler in all of Jordan named Marlboro, and tells them to drive the guns to Iraq. And you may be asking, is it safe? Yes, very safe. 50-50. They got to the border, give the army some cigarettes, and they were in Iraq. By morning, they stop at a gas station, when some armed men start shooting. But, Marlboro appears with some gas, the US Army shows up, and they escape, and finally deliver the Berettas. You drove these. Through the triangle of death. They take some photos, get paid $2.8 million, get a military escort to the airport, and leave. Back in Miami, they buy two porches, apartments, hire new employees, and start getting the business bigger. They find a really big contract that could be an opportunity for the business. They want to sell a huge amount of arms and munitions to the army. So, they travel to Las Vegas to buy all the weapons at a defense expo. But after a whole day of meetings, it seems impossible to get and move those guns. Until they meet Henry Girard. He is a legend in arm dealers. He has contracts in Albania and can get the whole order. And by the way, he is also on the terrorist watch list. So, they go to Albania. There, they go to the storage for the Albanian army, where there are 120 million Cold War AK-47 bullets. So, back in Miami, they submit the bid, and five months later, they win the Afghan deal. Then, they get approved by some state guys, and they realize that they came in $53 million lower than the nearest competition. <laughs> 
Meanwhile, David got some problems with his girlfriend, who knows he's lying about his job, and leaves the apartment with his daughter. The two friends are now ready to go to Albania, but before leaving, they make an official partnership agreement, and they get ready to go eight weeks to Albania and make $30 million. In Albania, David is preparing everything, but there's a problem with the AK munition. It's Chinese, and America has an embargo against China and can't use Chinese munition. After a few days, they decide to repack them all. Without the wooden crates, the US will never know the munition is Chinese. Is that legal? It's not illegal. During eight weeks, they were trading heavy wooden crates for light cardboard boxes. And even though the repacking cost $100 in salaries, they will end up saving $3 million in the transport. On Christmas, they had sent the first 5 million ammunitions, but Ephraim realized that Henry, the man who got them the ammo, had bought it for a really low price and made a lot of money from the deal. So he talks to his partner. David tells him to do nothing. Everyone was making money and it was fair, but Ephraim takes the contract and decided to do something. That night, some men enter David's room and kidnap him. The man aiming at David is Henry. He asks David how he thought he could cut him from his own deal and leaves. Immediately after that, David realizes that the workers repacking the ammo had never been paid, so he'll tell them and he'll come back. He took his things and goes back to Miami to meet his girlfriend. There, he goes to the office and tells Ephraim he wants his cut of the deal and he's out. Ephraim says he will give nothing and David doesn't find the contract. Three months later, David works as a masseuse again and Ephraim wants to talk. He offers David $200,000 but he says it's a joke and threatens him with telling all what they have done to the police, so they both leave. At his apartment, David receives a call from the New York Times. They want to know about an investigation about his company and the China ammo repacking. Both meet at the elevator. Ephraim says he's sorry, but David says he's always acting and they've never been best friends, so he punches him in the face. Such a piece of shit. When the elevator door opens, the FBI are there. What happened was that Ephraim had never paid the box guy in Albania, so he told everything to the Pentagon. The FBI busted Ralph and put a mic on him during that coffee talk. After all the investigation, Ephraim was sentenced to four years of prison while David got seven months of house arrest. At the end, Henry met David at his apartment and after a few questions, gives him his part of the Afghan deal. No more questions. So that was the summary of War Dogs. Comment which series or movie you'd like me to summarize for future videos. See you later. Go to work. Okay. Bye.